This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com, your place to explore the game. Hi everybody, I'm Marcus Case, and this is the Debbie Deck featuring Alro, the Ageless Ascetic. So the reason why I chose Allero the Aegis Ascetic is because I actually bought my first commander deck down here at the uh, Silver Unicorn slash Time Capsule in Hopewell, Virginia. Uh, I love Commander, I was a big Esper fan at the time, just started Magic, so I wanted to see what it was all about. And I just fell in love with it and I've been building it for about a year now. I did know that they actually had uh, Allero as a uh, promo, a judge promo, so I recently just got him and uh, I just went on a big tangent and just got everything I figured I could need for any sort of good control deck in uh, EDH. So to start the deck off, we always have basic lands. So I'm running one, two, three islands. And I'm running one, two swamps. And I'm running one, two, three planes. And let's just start off all the basic lands. And then I'm playing black, so you know what? Bajuka Bog, Graveyard Hate. Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, all of the black fixing I'm ever going to need. Vivid Creek, because Vivid Creek produces blue, which is one of my favorite colors in Magic. And then on top of that, it also gets the charge counters, which allows me to actually cast spells, you know, that I may be missing uh, white or blue for, or black for. Uh, Myriad Landscape, because uh, Myriad Landscape is just Myriad Landscape. It's a really great card to use in Commander, especially when you need to actually fix your colors. Uh, Vaults of the Archangel, primarily because uh, Elspeth, because when you're making uh, tokens and you know one one chump blockers, uh, Death Touch and Life Link is definitely a great thing to have. Uh, Reliquary Tower because Reliquary Tower. Uh, Temple of the False God because you know too much mana isn't a bad thing. Isolated Chapel because mana fixing. Drown Catacomb because mana fixing. And Glacial Fortress because mana fixing. Uh, I have uh, some of the cons gain lands in here for the colors that I need. Specifically because I'm using all of my Scry lands in uh, current Esper Control deck in Standard. Uh, and then I have a Juaro uh, a Refuge left over from uh, when I first bought the deck. And there's another uh, cons gain land. And then we have the classic bounce lands that produce. Uh, the two colors of the respective color that I'm going to need. So I'm running Azov Basilica, Demir Aqueduct, and Azorius Chancery. Uh, I'm also running a card that I rarely ever see. It's a Dromar's Cavern. It's a bounce land, but it also uh, comes into play untapped. So all I have to do is just return any non layer land back into my hand, which I don't see too many of those in the first place. And now I can add any color I need uh, for uh, my spells. And uh, then I'm running the fetches because fetches are fetches. And then shocks because shocks are shocks. Arcane Sanctum because it came with the deck and it still works pretty well. And then Rupture Spire and Transguild Promenade because it's Commander, I can play these slow lands. Uh, Mana Confluence because you know, I was going to need that fixing. Same thing with Command Tower. Alright, let's get us off with the artifacts. I use Sensei's Divining Top because I am a control deck, so I do need to see what I'm going to be pulling into. Uh, it actually avoids a lot of removal, and it's just a great tool to have. A spell book because I draw so many cards as it is, it's great to actually have a free spell that allows me to not discard any cards at my end step, as I, I will draw, have plenty of instances where I'll draw into half of my deck all at once, and I do not want to discard them at all. Contagion class because uh, proliferate. Proliferating is uh, I can care less about the minus one counters. I just I have plenty of friends in here that are really gonna need the proliferating. Same thing with contagion engine because contagion engine is just a great proliferation uh, artifact, as you know, friends. Vincer's journal because I need another instance you know of uh, infinite hand size and the life gain doesn't hurt at all either especially because I'm drawing half my deck so I'll probably be gaining upwards of like 32 uh, at uh, upkeep. 
Soul Ring because Soul Ring is Soul Ring. I really don't have any other mana rocks in the deck besides Soul Ring, primarily because uh, my mana is so fixed and uh, I usually wind up tutoring into something that allows me to actually cheat certain spells out without actually having to pay mana. Uh, Elixir of Immortality because I am a control deck and I want to constantly keep recycling everything that I need into the game because uh, if you get rid of it I'm probably just going to bring it back so it's I'm going to be a complete nuisance until I win the game. Uh, Never Nero's Disc because this is Commander and Never Nero's Disc is one probably one of the best cards that I actually put in a new Commander deck ever. And then starting off with my board wipes. Supreme Verdict, my favorite board wipe because it can't be countered. It's a four drop and it destroys all the creatures and because I have uh, not as many creatures as uh, you would normally see in a commander deck I prefer to make sure the field's clear so I can get anything off when, I, when need be because uh, commander damage is usually one thing that'll get me in or uh, just overrunning me can uh, really bring me down so board wipes, board wipes, board wipes. In Garrick's Wake because uh, sometimes I don't want to wipe my side of the field it's late game and I have a way to make sure that none of my opponents can uh, overrun me late game either. Merciless Eviction because Merciless Eviction, uh, very flexible, exiles instead of destroys, so stops a lot of, uh, you know, sliver strategies or anything like that, or, you know, basically stops indestructible and it's very flexible in anything I need to remove. And maybe I don't want to get a creature, so, you know, maybe I want to get a planeswalker or, you know, a troublesome enchantment or artifact. This is what's going to hit it. Wrath of God because Wrath of God is Wrath of God. Utter in because you know, gotta exile something. Rapid hybridization creatures don't like them, replace them. Uh, it's a funny card. Uh, if you're running blue, there's no point of not running rapid hybridization and pongify because if a opponent just got some big creature out and it has no sort of protection, it's funny now that they have you know a 3 3 frog lizard or a 3 3 ape replacing whatever it is that they had, especially because it only costs one uh, blue mana and it's at instant speed which is one of the best removal spells I can think of. Vindicate, because maybe I want to destroy a pesky land or a pesky uh, planeswalker, or your commander is just really annoying. Vindicate will definitely take care of that, especially if I have uh, either my infinite mana combo out or, uh, you know, I have uh, Tamiel's emblem out and I can just constantly just burn everything down on your side of the field so I can just walk through and win. As demonic tutor because demonic tutor is demonic tutor vampiric tutor because vampiric tutor is vampiric tutor and diabolic tutor because tutors and then there's diabolic revelation because there's been times where I have my infinite mana combination going off and then I'll just uh, cast diabolic revelation search for everything that's in my deck that's not a land and just drop my entire hand that that one turn and then game over and now we're moving over into our counter spells uh, undermine because I just really like this card uh, you know I'm paying the same amount for a hinder or maybe a cancel or something like that and then you're also taking three life at that now I know the new tuck rule just came into play so it makes hinder less relevant but there could also be other cards you know that are complete bombs if they hit the graveyard regardless or can be recovered from the graveyard and to make sure that doesn't happen or you know it's just also an additional counter spell. Render silent because uh, if an opponent is trying to go off, like uh, let's say if my opponent were me and he had access to render silent and I was about to go off, he could just render me silent and counter one of my spells and the next thing you know I can't go off and he could potentially disrupt the whole thing. So render silent for people who play just like me. Counterspell, because counterspell is counterspell. Um, I actually use Dromash Charm for more than just its countering ability, but mainly for its countering ability. Uh, I don't really use the gain of five life, I just use it for the minus two, minus two, because there's a special creature that I hold near and dear to me that I just recently added in the deck, and it's minus two, it's at, uh, minus two in that creature actually gets me one of my favorite things in this entire deck, and I'll actually show you that later on. I have Dissolve, because Dissolve is Dissolve. Dissipate, because Dissipate is Dissipate. And Rewind. Rewind because uh, I can cast Rewind, open up four lands, and we're ready to throw another counter spell at you if you try to try uh, anything else. And then Tamiyo's Emblem, which can get really, really dumb. 
Uh, I can just lock you out of the entire game just by rewinding everything. Time stretch because uh, maybe my opponent's setting up something dangerous and I could be against the ropes. I pull into a time stretch, cast it, two turns. Um, there's been ways I've actually managed to infinitely just cast time stretch and basically win the game because nobody else could do anything to me because they were all tapped out and it was my turn the entire game. Cyclonic Rift, because Cyclonic Rift is Cyclonic Rift, especially its overload uh, cost. You know, everybody uses that. Let everything go through. Wait to the end step. Now everything's back in your hand. Deal with it. Now, Orem's Chant is actually a replacement for Riot Control that I actually had in the deck before. Because, um, you know, you could swing at me for lethal and I could gain the life and stop the creatures and now you're tapped. But now Orem's Chant is actually a little bit more flexible. Uh, yeah, I don't get the life gain. And um, no, your creatures won't be tapped out. But I can also keep you from uh, casting spells for just one white mana. And then if I kick it for another one white mana, uh, you can't even attack me. Uh, this is an interesting card that I actually picked up. It's called Time Stop. You know, I can just end your turn. It removes everything from the stack. Everything gets exiled, including it. So when I actually cast this, let's say you're uh, having an ability that you're activating that you have to sack something in order for it to, you know, use, let's say if it's never Nero's disc, I can just time stop. And then you're, uh, at your cleanup step, uh, you skip over your discard phase because you went straight to the cleanup step, but uh, at least that ability didn't go off and you sacked your, uh, your never Nero's disc just to try to destroy everything on the field. Sphinx's Revelation, because Sphinx's Revelation is just a beautiful card, especially when I need the life gain and I need to draw, because card advantage is everything in this game. Omniscience. Now, this is my favorite enchantment ever, only because I play a lot of spells and I am an avid uh, control player, and if I want to, you know, just drop something from my hand unexpectedly, you don't have to look at my uh, lands, you know, being open to worry about anything uh, I'm just gonna throw it out and if you have a problem with it uh, nine times out of ten I probably have a response for your answer and omniscience just makes it so I can pretty much uh, hold advantage the whole game and usually I cheat it out by two until uh, turn five um, there's been plenty of times actually recently in a sanctioned commander game here at the uh, time castle slash uh, silver unicorn uh, I was actually playing against uh, a four-way and I actually had somebody swing into my Academy Rector, and I dropped an Omniscience, and then I pretty much was just ruling the game from that point, and it was already turn 5 or 6. And here's my enchantments. There's uh, Mind Unbound, because I just love drawing cards. Exquisite Blood, because why not? Exquisite Blood. Ristic Study, because you know, we'd be in the middle of a match, and you're constantly trying to throw out these spells or you're tapping yourself out to throw out these spells uh, and I'm just basically reaping everything because you either have to tap up or give me a uh, card advantage and that's actually uh, a very significant thing. Sanguine Bond because it works well with Exquisite Blood and with the simple fact that I do gain two life at upkeep so it's just one of those infinite combos that people hate but I use it because uh, I really like Commander, and you know, Commander is just one of those things where I don't necessarily see it as something that's too competitive. But I was uh, also taught how to play Magic on a competitive uh, standpoint, so having these two out is not a bad thing. On to the creatures. Jinkataxia's Core Augur, because uh, in that game I was mentioning earlier about you know Academy Rector coming out early and dropping omniscience, also had Jinkataxia's in my hand. So at uh, my opponent's end step, I just flashed in Jinka Texas and made him draw, you know, drop his whole hand. And then I was just drawing at my uh, end step, you know, keeping card advantage and taking it away from them, which is one of the best things I can actually see happening in this game where you have all the card advantage and your opponents have none. Memnart, because my infinite combo literally takes away everything that you have on your side of the field. Um, I have an infinite mana combo where I can just keep dropping mana in my mana pool, turn everything on your side of the field that doesn't have hexproof or a shroud uh, into an artifact and just literally steal it from you. And on top of that, and let's say if you have a Never Nero's Disc down, I drop out Mimlark and I have enough mana, I can just take away Never Nero's Disc as opposed to paying 7 and just pay for and took everything from you. 
Notion Thief because if you're trying to use card advantage against me, I'm actually just going to turn around and use it for myself. Meddling Mage because let's say um, I'm playing my friend's Vendillion Click deck, which is actually one of my worst matchups because this is a very slow deck. Um, Meddling Mage will just come out, turn two, and lock his Vendillion Click into the command zone because I really do not need Click coming out and doing what it does best, which is embarrassing me. Academy Rector. Now, this is something that's very near and dear to me. I use Dromash Charm to take the minus two, you know, onto it, and uh, search for omniscience, put it out, play all my big spells very early. Uh, you know, drop Jenga Taxius, take away card advantage from everybody very, very early on into the game. Uh, Consecrated Sphinx, because Consecrated Sphinx is Consecrated Sphinx. Uh, whenever you draw, I draw twice. So now, whenever you uh, try to gain card advantage, I'm already beating you in that aspect. Drug Skull Reaver, because uh, I do gain two life at upkeep. Uh, he is a pretty strong creature with flying, double strike, and lifelink. And because of the life gain, I am drawing extra cards, and card advantage is everything to me. To Fairy, Mage of Zalfir, because I don't want you countering anything, and I want to make sure that I'm the only one really doing much on the field. Sphinx of the Steel Wind, because Sphinx of the Steel Wind is just a great card. It has protection from red and from green. Uh, has flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink. You know, everything that I can imagine great in a card. So it's going to be hard to take it out with death touch. It has first strike, has vigilance, so it's going to block. It has flying, so it's getting over a lot of things. And it has protection from red and from green, which are two colors I barely ever play anyway. So that's going to be a great thing for me against, uh, you know, Jun decks or just... Uh, Regular old uh, gruel decks. Thassa, because she actually does become a creature in this deck. Uh, she's indestructible, and the scrying is really helpful. And and let's say uh, there may be an instance where I actually drop a Loro, because I actually do play a Loro, and I want him to swing it for commander damage, she actually will make him unblockable. Magister Sphinx because life link, uh, life gain decks are you know just annoying to deal with because their life total gets up so high. I know I don't mainly win with uh, just damage, but if there's an instance where I have to win with damage, I'll rather take it down a notch and make it easier for myself. Erebos, God of the Dead, because he actually does become a creature in this deck as well. Um, card draw. And on top of that, my opponents can't gain life, which is good against, you know, life gain decks. Great Whale. He uh, actually is one half of my infinite mana combination with Dead Eye Navigator. Uh, you know, I actually have gotten to use the guys out early, and it just becomes very, very stupid. Uh, but it really helps me out a lot. So when you see uh, Great Whale, best believe there's a Dead Eye Navigator coming in right behind him. Make sure, you know, I can do anything I want and you can't. Clever Impersonator. Uh, Clever Impersonator copies almost everything. So uh, there's been times where I've actually had Clever Impersonator copy uh, Drug Skull Reaver. I've actually had a copy just a number of different things. That have been very powerful to use. I uh, made it a copy of Aristic Study. You know, it's just a great card because it copies anything that's a non land permanent. Dead Eye Navigator because paired with the creature, flicker it, make it hard to remove, uh, infinite mana combos, or just enter the battlefield effects in general. And now I'm going to introduce you to my friends. That's Liliana. Use her mostly for her uh, tutor ability, but the plus one late game is actually pretty good. And in Commander, a lot of people are running a lot of creatures, so I can use her ultimate to actually gain advantage from that as well. Ashok, because Ashok can get out very early, just like he does in Standard right now. And he can become a pain to deal with so early on in the game. There's been instances where I've played Commander and almost lost because Ashok got out turn three when he needed to be out and it just wrecked me. Narset, because Narset is just a great card. I don't see why she's not seeing as much uh, play in my locals around here in Standard. Um, 
you know, just looking at the top card of my deck just to see if it's a uh, instant or sorcery and basically uh, counter spells or other friends you know in the deck it really helps me get that out because I'm actually getting it in my hand before you know anything can mill them off or anything like that and her minus two is actually pretty useful when I'm using tutor spells so that's also a good thing and then her emblem is just a bomb you know with me being a control deck that stops other control decks and on top of that this just stops other decks in general if they have uh, any other sort of you know interaction outside of their creatures they can't buff their creatures anymore or they can't you know do other things to just help them out they just have to drop creatures and creatures alone and there's a mirror match against a control deck it is not going to be pretty for my opponent jace the mind sculptor because jace the mind sculptor uh in uh, 1v1, I'll use this plus 2 and look at the you know, top card of the deck to see if I want to take it away or not. Uh, it's mainly just to build up until it's minus 12. So that's good in 1v1. And then in multiplayer, mostly I just use 0 to keep card advantage. I also put Sun's Champion because uh, it actually starts to generate me creatures, which is sometimes uh, a necessary thing, like I said earlier. It's really good with uh, Vault of the Archangel because Death Touch and Life Link. Tamiyo the Moon Sage because if you drop something that's just very, very annoying to deal with uh, and uh, it doesn't have hex proof, I can just tap it. And I say if you have a troublesome land or anything like that, it just gets tapped. And then I just love her uh, minus eight, you know, make an emblem that gives me you no know, maximum hand size and anything that will go on my from my hand to the graveyard comes right back into my hand or anything that would come to the graveyard for the most part and it's just been one of my best friends in this deck Teferi Temporal Archmage because card advantage and it's minus 10 is actually not bad either because uh, the emblem allows me to actually uh, activate you know Planeswalker abilities and things like that whenever need be so that's actually pretty helpful Karn liberated because Karn is Karn. Uh, there's been times where I needed to restart the game in order to not lose. Yeah, the games take forever, but I also have advantage now that I've actually uh, started the game up. Ugin, because his uh, alt is actually pretty quick to get to. Uh, it's plus two, gets rid of creatures, and it's minus X is just a board wipe. And last but not least, Soren Solemn Visitor. Uh, uses plus one because uh, really I'm just trying to build into his emblem or proliferate into his emblem so I can at least you know have one emblem down to make you sack a creature at upkeep and then uh, it's minus two for vampires because I've actually managed to beat down a mill, uh, mill duck with just a vampire and Soren's plus one and then I only use the emblem to make sure he didn't drop any creatures I wound up running that whole game because he did not mill, away, mill me fast enough and the vampire beat him down absolutely in a vicious manner I also have emblems for my friends. As a custom Narset emblem, I actually got from Greece. I ordered it. You know, gotta have Soren's emblem and his vampire. Uh, Elspeth's emblem. My signed uh, Tamiya emblem. Soldier tokens. Frog lizard tokens. Teferi emblem. Alright, thanks for watching CMDR Decks, and please like, subscribe, and favorite.